Welcome to a kitchen countertop overview. In this episode, we're going to look at some Speedotron Brown Line Power Packs. Power Packs, or power supplies, as they're often called, store electricity in capacitors. These capacitors are of various sizes. There are multiple capacitors in each power pack for better efficiency. The amount of power needed depends upon the size of the area to be lighted, the intended distances that will be covered by the light, and you know recycle speed, a number of factors. One of the best things about photography today is that we are blessed. We live in an era of instant ISO adjustment. If an exposure looks a little bit dim, we can up the ISO one-third stop with almost no penalty. We can up it two-thirds of a stop with almost no penalty. With the better studio cameras like the Canon 5D series and the better Nikon full-frame cameras, there is almost no penalty in using studio flash with ISOs as high as 500 to 640. The image quality is already very high and with a generous exposure one can get by with almost no noise. And so with the studio lighting it's a lot different than shooting high ISOs like 500 in poor lighting. You can notch up the ISO from 100 to 125, 160 no problem with today's cameras. With these power packs, for typical jobs that you're going to be shooting, I think the D402 is almost the ideal combination of size, weight, price, and features. It weighs about 11 pounds. This D604, it too weighs about 11 pounds. This tiny little D202, it weighs about 5.5 pounds. It's pretty small. Let's start with the D202 and its simple system of power distribution. Since it only has two outlets, it doesn't have a lot of combinations. You have outlets one and two. You have full power, and that's it. No power adjustment. So this pack is for when you need two lights on the go, and you want to have one light at like 100 watt seconds and another at 100 watt seconds. Very simple. If you need to have a little bit of difference between the lights, you can go to asymmetrical power distribution here. And then what you get is 200 watt seconds in the channel one, that's an option. Or if you want to pop it over to this number two channel, it's 150 watt seconds in asymmetrical. So you have two options for one light, 200 or 150. With two lights, that changes a bit. You have 100, 100 in symmetrical and in asymmetrical mode, 150. So those are your options. Now, this is a very small power pack. I cannot emphasize how tiny this is. This is about as small as you're ever going to see one in the modern era. The D402 here is a little bit more typical of the size of most power packs today. It's got plenty of room for capacitors. I believe this has six in it. And last time I looked, there were six. And um, it offers a split A channel and B channel. That's what I call it, A and B. Speedotron listed as 1 and 2 and 3 and 4, but it's split right here. These two give more power. These two give less power when in asymmetrical mode. Now, we have a 400 watt second power supply. If we hook up four lights, we get 100, 100, 100, 100 watt seconds in symmetrical mode. In asymmetrical mode, with four lights, what we'll have is this. We will have 120 watt seconds, 120 here, and here we'll have 30 and 30. With three lights in asymmetrical mode, we have two different power options. We have 140, 140, and 70 in the back channel. So these two are 140 each, 140 watt seconds, 140 watt seconds. And either one of these, we can only use one, will deliver 70 watt seconds. The other alternative is a fairly common two stop split with 200 watt seconds being delivered in the A channel out of one of these, 200, and then 50 50. Each one of these giving 50. So you have 200 watt seconds from one and 50 and 50 here. Very useful, extremely useful. Now, with two lights, your options are 200 and 200 right here in asymmetrical, or 200 here and 100 here. 
So you've got some fairly simple blocks that uh, it's fairly easy to learn. In terms of the output, now with a 65 degree, 11 and a half inch reflector, covers a 65 degree beam spread. This power pack delivers a guide number of 210. That's F21 at 10 feet. At 200 watt seconds, the guide number is 150. F15, 100 watt seconds is 105. And 50 watt seconds delivers a guide number of 75. Now that is F7.5 across, not a narrow speed light type of beam, but a 65 degree beam spread. This allows you to light up a pretty darn large area at 10 to 20 feet and have an f-stop between f21 and around f8.5 to 9 depending on the room, its absorbency, the height of the ceiling, blah blah blah. Anyway, plenty of power in this. One way to get less power is to use this splitter. It has one connector here and two outlets. So what it does is it takes the amount of watt seconds and lowers it by 50 percent. It also adds one more head. So when you put this on, if you put it in, you put it on and thread it down, it forms a very secure connection. It will not arc. It's 100 percent safe. Now you've got two outlets where there was once one so let's say we're going to use this with three different lights. Okay, now this doesn't change the power distribution to the A channel, the one and two. Those always stay the same. Only this outlet is affected. So it gives you a degree of adjustability. You can move it around to the other channel. Any, any, any channel you want to use the splitter in. You can even add a second one. Now, let's say we have three lights. We can get 200 watt seconds up here in the front channel and 25 here out of each of these two and then the normal 50 here. That's a very useful split. 200 watt seconds for a powerful main light, 25 watt seconds to use with two fairly hot unmodified reflector lights and then 50 watt seconds here as a fill light. Very, very, very useful combo. Really like to have a splitter. Well, let's look at the top of this. It's pretty simple. Modeling light on and off. Symmetrical, even power, even modeling light. When the switch goes down to asymmetrical, the modeling lights in these two uh, outlets dim because the lights dim, so you can visually tell whether you're in asymmetrical or symmetrical. There's also a half power switch here. That cuts everything in half. All the power distributions on the chart are split in half. They're lowered in half, and so you divide the watt seconds by two for the guide numbers here. So, pretty simple, pretty basic. It's been around a long time. It's not that heavy. Like I said, about 11 pounds. With the connectors, the old Speedotrons use these chrome colored connectors. Newer Speedotrons use a black quick connect. Here's an M90 light. This light is a combination main light, umbrella light, and background light. It's very useful. It's not that big, as you can see. It's not a particularly large light. It's model M90. It's been made for about 35 years or so, maybe more. It uses three 25 to 35 watt economical bulbs and it has a 400 watt second flash tube. Umbrella goes through here, goes through the umbrella mount here. Uh, very simple. It will work in a soft box too with the right um, speed ring, which is kind of a, something people don't know. This also works very well in the uh, umbrella box lights. It's also a pretty darn good background light. This is a very versatile light. The only drawback that I, you can see is that the reflector is held on by screws. It does not just bayonet off. So it's designed to be used this way. It's large enough 
that it can be used as a bare main light, especially with a diffuser added for portraiture or fashion work or anything like that where you want to use just the light without an umbrella and have a pretty nice looking light. Uh, the, the newer Speedertron brown line, as I said, uses these black quick connects. These just pop on like that. There's no threading and unthreading like this. Now, this is a little bit slow. This used to be the knock against brown line was the threaded collets. With the instant pop-off collet, you just lift up, it's spring-loaded, and it comes right off. It goes on, so it's really easy to make a change. One must, however, always remember to turn the power off when disconnecting or connecting heads, or you can arc and burn the pins. Now, this is a really simple five-pin connection system. This is also utilized by the older Novatron lights. They both have the same trigger, trigger voltage, which is 800 volts. That's how much current is sent through the flash tube. So these will work with Novatron power packs and vice versa. So the Speedertron heads that uh, most people have depend on what they want to use them for. This is an MW3R. It has an incandescent bulb and no umbrella shaft mounting. As you can see, there's no shaft hole here for an umbrella. That can be, you know, there's ways around that. But these are designed to be used as hair lights. It has a 400 watt second flash tube. The flash tube is shared between all the brown line small lights. The M90, MW3R, and the MW3U, which stands for umbrella light. This light has an umbrella receptacle here and a threaded umbrella tightener here. Uh, I got this from eBay. It's been used by some pro. It's his fill light, F. And it's got a string on it here that shows the right distance to position it for quick setups. Turns out it's about F8 at ISO 100 at the end of this knot here. He's got it all doped out for that. So you can just pull the string right out, boom, no flash metering. This uses a quartz 100 watt modeling lamp and it's pretty bright. That gives you the ability to use it in a uh, enclosed umbrella with good visibility. You can't use a snoot on this because this modeling light will overheat. These heads are very small. As you can see, the MW3 series light heads are very small. Pretty darn compact. 